Well, Rumbi Kadetsa, you have lived on four continents. Are you a global citizen, a wanderer between worlds, or first and foremost an African patriot? What moves you to lead such a life? I traveled a lot as a, as a young person because my father was a diplomat. And that opened a lot of doors for me, allowing me to meet people from different cultures, from different backgrounds. And to me it was a gift because it, I always had a much broader perspective on people's backgrounds um, very early on in life. So when I eventually moved back to Zimbabwe, it was, it was almost a, a culture shock because um, my experience was far removed from, from that of my peers. And it, only, it was only when I got older that I realized um, just how, how, how lucky I was and enriched by the experience of my youth and um, in becoming a mother. I also wanted to bestow that on my children. I thought it was very important that they had that kind of perspective um, because it's not something that you can get rid of. It's theirs, it's their wealth in terms of knowledge and information and education are so important and to be able to, to travel is very important. And I, I love my country. I always go back to my country. Um, if I travel, you know that I'm going to come back to my country. I'm the one who's there. I'm going to be the one who's locking the door at the end of the day. It's very important for me to be there, but also to understand the context of the world around me. And in the work I do, I try to also um, uh, enable people to also be exposed because it also helps in our relationships and our work um, and in the work that we do with other people. All right, thank you. Now let's focus on the situation in Africa actually. How do you see the situation in your home continent and in particular in Zimbabwe? And do you think the waves of well civil unrest from the Arab world will also reach your country? Mm. Africa and Zimbabwe are in a very, very interesting place historically right now in terms of it's just been fascinating to see what's been happening in North Africa and in the Arab world in terms of effecting change in, in people's nations and changing leadership because there's something that we talk about a lot is about the Darth of leadership in, in Africa and many African states, um, my own included. Uh, what is happening in North Africa, it would be difficult, I think, to, to replicate that in Zimbabwe. Um, the change that will eventually happen in Zimbabwe will, I think, will be quite different because of the ingrained, organized structures that are used um, to, to put people into a place of fear. And if we are ever to, to work through that fear, um, I think it's going to be something that's different that comes from within Zimbabwe because it's, uh, it's quite unique in how uh, the, the, even the security forces are very much ingrained in the structures of the, of the leadership. So I, one thing I, I always believe is that um, change does not always necessarily have to be political um, because some leaders obviously we know stay for very long. Change can also be within communities and people don't know about a lot of the amazing things that are happening in Zimbabwe and the people who are doing things within their communities, for their families, for their church networks, for, for their organizations, doing incredible things. And people from Zimbabwe go on to other countries to do equally incredible things. I mean, on the global uh, stage, you'll find Zimbabweans doing well in almost mm -hmm. every industry. And that's something that, that fills me with, with great pride. So the changes that will ultimately um, lead to different leadership, whether it's tomorrow, five years, or 20 years down the line, um, I know will be quite unique, but we also need to just recognize the change that we can affect within our own lives and within our own communities so that there is constant hope, uh, people striving for, for hope for the future of their children so that we can create a society where their children will be able to, to, to achieve things without patronage. They'll achieve things because they're able, because they're intelligent, because they work hard. And those are the values that a lot of people are instilling within their communities that we need to support and, and celebrate. Mm -hmm. And as you have, uh, as we've heard during the last days, social cohesion is the guiding theme of the BMW Foundation. What can we do to strengthen social cohesion in African societies? And what do you see as the reasons for the deep divisions that, sometimes, that we sometimes find in African societies. 
to to a great extent, there's a, there's a lack of, of knowledge and communication within our societies. Uh, young people from where I come from will tend to know more about what's happening outside of Zimbabwe or entertainment scenes and entertainment scenes in the U.S. than what is happening within Zimbabwe or within Africa even. And uh, that's one of the, the things that I think um, is a problem for us. And, and in the, the, the industry that I work in, in film and video, I think we have a very important role to play in changing perceptions about our continent, um, in telling stories so that people know more about what's happening um, in our continent, and finding the dissemination tools for getting the content out to, to our audiences, because many of our audiences will not go to a cinema they may not have a television. So trying to find innovative strategies for disseminating information. And um, this week alone, I was able to, to meet with somebody who's also working in, in distribution. So for me, that's been a great opportunity for the work that I'm doing to, to, to tie in Zimbabwean filmmakers with the outside uh, world and, um, and more distribution channels. So. In, in order to empower ourselves as a continent, we need to look more inwards. We need to look for solutions that are African and homegrown. And we need to be able to network more amongst ourselves. And that's been a very important um, achievement in what the BMW Foundation has done in terms of bringing us together and also bringing in new networks from Europe as well so that we can, we can tell our stories to people from abroad and learn best practices and, and try to, to make it work within our own contexts. Those things have been, have been very important to me and I hope I can, I can carry on with, uh, with, with trying to enact some of the things that I've learned here and carry on with that learning. For me that's what, what would be very valuable, to be able to continue with that learning process um, and continue with the communication um, with professionals in Africa and abroad. So what do you think, what would you say are your key takeaways from the forum that you have been participating in now the last few days? What will I take away? Like the key takeaways. The key takeaways. Um, the key takeaways, well one is very tangible, the one I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm in terms of being able to, to meet with somebody who's very involved in distribution um, because that's, that's been one of my weaknesses in terms of my work is distribution and, uh, and reaching new markets uh, through, through, through new technologies. Um, so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to expanding that relationship that I've started here. And um, also just uh, the, the, the networks, because I think um, working in film, I tend to often just work within my industry, work with other filmmakers, um, work with people who are stakeholders within the film industry. But uh, being the only filmmaker here, you know, you're forced to now interact with people in other industries and to tell them about the work that you're doing. And, um, uh, very often in our societies, there's a there are myths surrounded around people who work in arts and culture. Um, but I think we're, we're debunking those myths by, by interacting with people in different industries. We're, we're debunking those, and we're creating, um, I think, strategies for the future. And that for me is exciting. Um, and perhaps one day, maybe one of the people here will be able to to help with 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 finding investment for the work that we do. Or we'll be able to, um, like for example, we went to grassroots soccer and I just completed a TV series about a soccer team. So I'm planning to, to, to meet with their, the partners in Zimbabwe and look at communication uh, strategies for, for disseminating more information about the work that we're all doing. So those are some of the exciting things I can say I can take away from okay. this forum. Great, thanks. And, but let's go back to the film industry that you've been talking about. I mean, it's an extremely difficult business, I assume, especially in Zimbabwe as well, but also for women maybe. I mean, women are worldwide still being underrepresented and in Africa even more so. Um, and what can be done to strengthen women in your sector, but also in society as a whole in Africa, but even worldwide? What do you think? Uh, 
just to strengthen women, I come back to the same, I, I sound like a broken record, but it's, it's really education. Education is really key for us. And I was, I was fortunate to, to attend a meeting of African women filmmakers last September, women from all over Africa who are working in film. And some of the things we were discussing was just the, there's just, we're, we're so isolated because we're doing something that's traditionally not seen to be something women do. Um, and, and it can be difficult, and some of our, our colleagues have, have, have experienced such terrible experiences because they're alone, because they feel they have no one to talk to. Um, and meeting with this network of African women filmmakers was, was, was very empowering for me to be able to share ideas and ultimately, hopefully, even do um, various projects together. So we, we're looking at... Uh, uh, trying to find more ways of educating more young women to, to come into the industry. But it's not only about educating the young women, it's also about educating the men. So that they are they are supporters, they are they are participants, they are very much involved in in, in, in including um, young women it be, so that it becomes mainstream. It's it's just normal to be to think that look, there's a young woman there, she must come into the fold. Not to say that she must come in just because she's a woman, but you know, we need to empower young women to be good at these things, but provide an enabling environment where they, they won't feel that it's uh, women don't go into this industry or where they won't feel that somebody will look down upon them or that they may not be able to take care of their families because working in film, sometimes you're working 14, 16 hour days on a set with very different people in, in remote areas or wherever you're filming. And it can be difficult if you're a mother, if you've got a family, if you've got other responsibilities at home. Um, but to be able to have a supporting family, like I do, um, and like more and more women have, uh, to have the support from your family is so empowering in, 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 in helping you to, to do the work that you do and uh, to strengthen uh, the the... the, the the will of other young women to get into the industry and it's something we were talking about the last two days, the importance of role models and to be able to be a role model to another young woman, even if I inspire one young woman to get into mm. film, I think I've done something, but to be able to inspire more, I would like to achieve that too. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Now one final, actually very personal question in the end, where do you see yourself 10 years from now, where do you want to be? In 10 years from now, I'm yes. going to have a string of feature films behind mm -hmm. me. Because uh, I there's, a, there's, a, there's an old saying that it takes an African filmmaker an average of seven years to make a film. That's the myth. And I've just completed my first feature film. It's, a, it's like something I'm doing. It's my content. It's not somebody else's content. You know, ownership. And it's very exciting for me. And it took me uh, eight years. It took me eight years to make the film, <laughs> but I'm finally finishing it this year, and I'm very excited about that. You know, I, I've I've traveled the film festival circuit, but now I'll be able to take something that's completely mine, not somebody else's. It's completely mine, and that's what I want to continue to do. I want to make my films, but I also want to enable other people to make their films. Uh, there are young people. There are more young people from Zimbabwe who are coming home, which is, wasn't happening before. I mean, that's, that's very positive for me. They're coming home and they want to work at home, but uh, we don't have a vibrant enough in industry. So those are some of the challenges that we're gonna have to pick up together. How do you create an industry? How do you create the, the, the platforms and make sure you have the technologies and the skills and the distribution and so on and so forth. And so, Unfortunately, I won't be able to just focus on films. There's so many other things that need to be focused on, but uh, it's also nice to be able to be a kind of pioneer in a fledgling industry, um, to be able to create things. So I would like to, in 10 years, be a person who enables filmmakers to tell their stories and make more films in Zimbabwe and, and in the continent. Great. Thank you very much.